Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. Last night I posed to myself a question, what does it take to be a great teacher? And when I explored that question, I had to ask, what is the root or the genesis of teaching? And that's what I want to talk about today on Metal Tips and Tricks. What is the root or the foundation of teaching? And it's very simple. The root is learning. To become a great teacher, you need to learn. And I want to talk about that today a little more in depth of where I get my resources, where I study. First of all, of course, you've got books. Um, you'll catch me almost every night with a little book light going and reading and just studying everything I can. The next, of course, is YouTube channels. And I've got two YouTube channels that are basically undiscovered that I want to talk about that are amazing sources. First, we have Dan Gilbert. He is a university professor. I'm guessing, I'm not really sure, he never says, but when you see his shop, you'll see what I mean. It is a scientific laboratory. The next guy is Suburban Tool Incorporated. The president is Don Bailey. What they do is they build special test equipment and mounting and bracketing systems. His expertise is in grinding. And when he talks, you listen. Even my wife was leaning over my shoulder the other day as I'm watching him, and she was just fascinated by his teaching style, his sense of humor and the wealth of knowledge that he presents in the simplest fashion. Again, you gotta check out Don Bailey and Dan Gilbert, just excellent information. Let's talk about books. I wanna talk about some of my favorite, and also my favorite resource for getting books. We were in Portland, Oregon uh, recently, and we went to a place I always have to go to, which is Powell's Books. Powell's Books, I think they still claim the largest freestanding bookstore in America. And when I say large, it is multiple stories and several buildings. One of the buildings is dedicated just to technical stuff. And we like to hear that, don't we, guys? Where you can just go in and there's an entire section just on metalworking. And it starts from one end of the spectrum to the other end. Amazing. Always have to go there. But i got to warn you guys about something. It's, well, books are expensive. But books, when you take your wife to Powell's, becomes extraordinarily expensive. Because shopping around there is some of the best on the West Coast. It's a place called the Pearl District. Um, actually, Pearl District and the Brewery District, they're, all, they're right next to each other. You've got Anthropology, J. Crew, you name the fashion companies, they're there. So when I go look at books, she goes shopping. So needless to say that my $200 in books is dwarfed by her fashion buying. But you know, guys, to make my wife happy is to go buy a pair of shoes. I'm on board. And I go hang out at the bookstore. <laughs> well, and I go buy machinery, a lot of machinery. So let's talk about some of the books I just recently picked up. But le actually, let's back up. Let's back up a minute. Here is one of the books you have to have. You have to have a machinery's handbook. This really is the Bible, or most important resource you can have in your shop. It covers everything you need to know to get something done from the size of reamers to the holes you need to threading. Um, here I just found a great one on um, X and Y axis for numeric control which is really interesting is they use the right-handed thread rule and I don't know if you guys know what that is so let me tell you the right-handed thread rule is to determine how you need to screw a bolt on or off 
to get it to loosen or tight. You basically take your right hand, curl it, and which way your thumb is pointing, you look at the curl on your fingers, and that's which way you tighten or loosen. So if I want the bolt to go that way, I curl my fingers, I know I have to put a wrench on it and turn the wrench this way. If I need to tighten it or move the bolt or not the other way, I just point my thumb that way and you can see the direction of the fingers will help me indicate which way to go. And it sounds very simple. I find it really useful when I'm crawling underneath the rover and I'm in some weird position, I'm out of alignment from the real world and I can't figure out which way to tighten or loosen a bolt. So I grab my hand, literally I'm looking at it, go, oh, this is the way to go. Saves me a lot of time, a lot of frustration, because you know, bolts get stuck, and if you're tightening them the wrong way, well, things break. So just a great section here, um, X and Y axis on the different machines. Just a fun resource, a book you have to get. <clears throat> Here's another one of my favorite resources, Shop Theory. Goes in um, great detail. Oh yeah, this is actually it was printed originally, I think in 1942, and it was prepared by the Henry Ford Trade School. So you have to realize that the information here is just spectacular. And they go over some of the simple things of how to set up a surface gauge, how to set up a planar gauge, the different types of tooling. This is an excellent resource for me to find out about different types of tools. There's so much out there and this helps guide me to where I want to be. It goes into different types of taps, of course, gears. One of the things I find out about my learning and my education is I can watch one threading video and learn how to thread. But I may not quite comprehend it. When I hear it from multiple sources, I learn it better because sometimes somebody speaks or says something just a little different in a way that I understand it easier. And I, so when I look at books, I still read, like here's one on um, cutters. I still read every source I can to find out. When I was a photographer, I read everything I could to figure out how to do things better. Another thing in this book is just different types of machines, turret lathe stuff, which for some reason is one of my weird passions. I love turret lathes. I don't do manufacturing, um, but they are fantastic. So again, uh, shop theory. Got it used for about 14 bucks. Here to me, the Machinist Handbook, Bedside Reader. This book is a lot of fun. Now there's actually three in the series, uh, one, two, and three. This is the second one. He just talks about building different types of machines, um, the understanding of that. There's some wonderful stories in here. In this one here, there's a great one about shop safety, about uh, Oh, how do I want to go? My wife found this one. She was reading it while we were driving back to uh, Sandpoint about safety and an accident that happened that uh, caused multiple ac accidents. And well, it involves a woman losing, well, her top. And that was a, the genesis for multiple accidents to happen in 15 seconds. So just kind of a fun story. And he just brings that out. Great books. Uh, these are no longer being printed. You can still buy them on Amazon. Um, yeah, I don't think you guys will be buying one on Amazon. They're around 200 bucks. But if you're dedicated, buy one. If you do find one of these at a cheap price, buy it. This one here, um, I was fortunate to get it for 40 bucks. So I'm very happy about that. Another great resource is, of course, textbooks. Textbooks are fabulous for one thing. They're usually under about 20 bucks, usually about 10. The thing I enjoy about textbooks is they teach the basics of machining. And when I talk about the basics, let me give you an example. I used to coach track. I was a pole vault coach. My goal was to teach the basics of pole vaulting. And once I could get the basics down, 
my athletes were better. So here's an example. Anybody can run 100 meters. Very few people can do 100 meters under 10 seconds. And those that do, do the basic mechanics of running better than anybody else. And that's what machining is about, is understanding the basics and practicing those as your foundation and build on those. So that's what I love about these textbooks. Another source is catalogs, especially for tooling and different types of information along that line. This one here is from Bixby uh, Machine and Tool Supply. These are amazing. It's just great to see quick prices. I know you can look this stuff up on the internet, but there's something great about touching paper and going through here and just seeing what is available, what can make my life easier. Again, important resource. Now, every once in a while, I buy a book just because it's cool. And here's an excellent example of buying a book I thought was cool. This is the Machinery and Tool Maker's Handbook. Fantastic. I bought it because of the embossed leather cover. Very nice. So when you open it up, the information is just nice, simple, straightforward, but again, said in a different way that may make it easier to understand. And I remember I was having a conversation with my Uncle Don, and he was a university professor. He taught at WSU and also Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. He loved the science of teaching. I remember having a conversation with him about it, and he told me that he could write a test where A students would fail and C and D students would ace. That fascinated me. And basically what he could do is write a question that an A student would make too complicated and overthink the equation where, you know, the C and D students, well, they just want a simple question and answer it and get to the point. And that was just fascinating to me, and I've always been intrigued by teaching. I also learned from two teachers that I really love, and they're in complete opposite ends of the spectrum. One is, his name is Matt Hannon. He's a pastor in Vancouver, Washington, has an amazing church called New Heights Church. And his teaching style is so amazing and so powerful. Ten years later, I still quote parts of his sermons. They're that powerful. And teaching is about retaining the information. The other teacher I always enjoy, and like I said, on the opposite end of the spectrum, is Carl Sagan, atheist. Now, Carl is wrong in certain areas, and Matt Hannon is definitely right on others. Um, I guess I'm feeding the trolls with that one. I'm going to get a lot of emails on that, I'm sure. But, you know, sometimes you've got to feed the trolls. I've got to, you know, give something for somebody to complain about or argue about. And feeding the trolls, sometimes you just can't help it. Carl Sagan also had a very interesting teaching style, very similar to Matt Hannon's. And I try to combine how they teach and what I do here. So I've got one last book I want to show you, Machine Tool Reconditioning. You'll catch me reading something out of this almost every night. This is the book I've been really looking for. And what it's about is how to scrape in a machine. And to try to find books on this subject is very, very difficult that are accurate and correct and simple enough to read. And this book definitely covers it. It's a, uh, this is a reprint. The original was back in the 1940s. So you can now buy this book easily. Um, it's very expensive. It's $100. But the information in it is invaluable. My mill is getting a little old, and I want to scrape that in. And I've been wanting to know how to do it correctly, because there's so much going on with the way the table moves up and down. That alone, how do you keep that square to the turret on top? This book covers all of that. If you're talking about uh, re-scraping your machine 
and trying to get it reconditioned. Machine tool reconditioning. Excellent, excellent book. So here is, you know, a small collection of the books that I really, really enjoy. Again, you got to have the machinery handbook. Textbooks are excellent and affordable. Catalogs are free. Um, just remember, if you're going to go to Powell's Books, don't take your wife because you'll save some money. So until next time, go out and shop, build something cool. Thanks.